<laughs> I know, you're probably looking at the title of the video and you're saying, wait, eh, 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 eh. yeah, it's true. It's true. I'm actually reviewing a takeover show. This is the first show I've reviewed in a while of any kind, isn't it? I don't even remember the last one that I reviewed. Uh, unfortunately for some of you, that means I'm back reviewing shows again, which certainly I could understand your frustration. But for others, this may be reason to mark out or celebrate. I don't know, and I don't particularly care. What I can say, though, is that if you were looking for me to come on here and rent and rave as I might have about other NXT-related stuff in the past, Tonight, uh, you're not getting that. Because I really, really enjoyed this TakeOver show. I can't say for sure, just based off of memory, if this is the absolute best to me of the TakeOver shows. It is certainly one of my favorites, though. Like, if I was trying to sit there and say, you know, give me something that makes me a little hopeful about the future of the WWE product. Give me something that makes me a little bit hopeful about the future of professional wrestling as a whole. A show like tonight certainly would be a good thing to show me, to make me feel like that, to help me see it a little bit. Like, really, I, I legitimately enjoyed this show. I do not have a whole lot of gripes about it. You know, from the very beginning, as soon as I see my old pal Finny the Twink, Finn Balor, I'm sitting there saying, oh, good Lord, here we go. He's going to be bumping around and doing a bunch of crap that doesn't matter. And he doesn't have the body paint. So once he does the entrance and now there's no fans, like, what's the appeal here? I'm going against Timothy Thatcher, who I know nothing about because I don't watch NXT. Uh, but, you know, sometimes that could be okay, too, because I can come into it with a fresh perspective. It gives me the perspective of, you know, how do these guys appeal to somebody that is not familiar with them? How do they appeal to somebody that might be seeing them for the first time or one of the first times? And I got to say, I was really impressed, in particular with the match. Like, I'm used to watching an NXT TakeOver show and just see a bunch of bumping and flipping and ROH indie New Japan type of crap. And while certainly that has a place on every show... And I understand the business has changed, so I'm going to get more of that than I sometimes might like. It was refreshing to watch the opening of a TakeOver show with what felt like more of a true traditional wrestling match. Like if you were trying to make an argument to me that Finn Balor was actually a really good wrestler, if you were trying to make the argument to me that he is somebody that I should actually care about, most of the stuff I've seen out of him in WWE is a joke and a half. This, though, what I saw tonight, you could make a better argument and, and a better presentation to me saying, hey, you should acknowledge Prince <laughs> Devitt or whatever, Fergal, whatever the hell, Finn Balor, as being a good wrestler. Because I, I thought him and Thatcher went out there, told a really, really good story. And more than that, when I think about wrestling, I think about not so much the suspense of disbelief, but just the suspense of reality and being able to get absorbed in it. And I was able to get absorbed into it because in part I thought that both of these guys, everything that they were doing was ultimately pointed at trying to win the damn match. How refreshing is that? Instead of it going into a match and be like, oh, we got 30 minutes, everybody's got to get the crap in. This wasn't it at all. Like, everything that they did from a psychology standpoint, from a submission standpoint, from a move standpoint, all had seemed to have significance and bearing and be building towards wanting to get to the ultimate goal, which was winning the match. I loved it. I thought it was a perfect table setter to lead into the sec second match, which was the latter match for the North American title. Yeah, even looking at this match, I said, oh, wow. They actually have some guys that are different here. You got the dude that's dressed up like Bam Bam Bigelow, you know, which got me kind of sentimental thinking back about Bam Bam Bigelow. I think he was a damn near 400-pound dude with the flames tattooed on his head. He just looked cool. He was cool. He could go in the ring. He could do some incredible athletic shit. Think about Vader-type style stuff. And, and, you know, always remember about Bam Bam Bigelow. It's like one thing that you never take away from him 
was that he main evented WrestleMania 11. And while you tried to forget that WrestleMania in a lot of ways, like he was the event. And he went out and had a very underrated match with a football player in Lawrence Taylor. So anyways, but you're looking at these guys and you see Damian Priest and you, even the, the Cameron Grimes, what was he, Trevor Lee and uh, Impact. Like I, that's why, if I'm remembering correctly, um, you know, then I'm forgetting somebody, and then the, he who shall not be named apparently. Uh, <laughs> he didn't win. Y'all tried to get the Fire Velveteen Dream hashtag trending during the match, and it worked. But does it really work if you're tweeting hashtag Fire Velveteen Dream when you're watching him perform? on the network that you pay money to subscribe to each month. Nah. Nah. Just saying. Um, but beyond all of that, we'll, we'll look past that. Because that's a whole other hornet's nest of stupidity right there. Yeah, the match I enjoyed. Match was really good. Damian Priest going over. Like I'm sitting there looking at him. I said, is this Roman Priest? Is this Damian Reigns? I'm allocating the side. But... They're just like from the optics of it. I saw several people in this match that were interesting and then Johnny Gargano. <laughs> yeah. Now, but he didn't do anything to irritate me or annoy me in this match. It was cool. Like, I actually think a guy like Gargano stands out more in this match because you actually have some personalities and characters. You have guys that look different, that work different, that act different. So, you know, two matches in, even though the latter match is a little more of what you would expect out of an NXT show, because of what happened in the first match, it was perfectly placed. The pacing was good. Like, I really, really liked it. And then you follow that up with what was, to me, the real surprise of the night. It's Pat McAfee and Adam Cole. Now, the surprise to me is not that Pat McAfee is a personality or that he's a character. He always has been, going back to his days of being an all-pro punter with the Coles. He's always been a personality, bit of a red ass, and a bit of an irritator. Perfectly suited to be a wrestling type of personality. So in terms of being able to do something with him and work something in terms of a match where it could kind of get over, I'm not that surprised that it could happen. But what I saw here, right in the middle of the show, just really knocked me off my feet. This was really, really good. I tweeted about it during the show, how this reminded me a lot of D'Angelo Williams at Slammiversary a couple of years ago. And I said, holy crap, why isn't he a wrestler? When you look at this match, I'm sorry. If you're trying to sit there and tell me, Adam Cole, baby, is the future. He wasn't even the guy that came across in this match as the bigger star. It was Pat McAfee, and it's not close. The stuff that he was doing was incredible. He was actually being a character. He was being a personality. His timing was crisp. His moves were mostly good. Like some of the stuff he did was kind of basic, but then he had spectacular stuff. Like they were actually able to legitimately go out there and have a full-on pretty much regular wrestling match. Like people comparing it to celebrity matches, and this is one of the better celebrity matches that I've seen. Yes, but I would go beyond that. It's probably one of the better pure wrestling matches that you've seen in 2020. And it doesn't necessarily mean pure wrestling just based off of the stupid moveset. Like so many things about this just absolutely worked. So if the point here was to give Adam Cole a rub, I don't think that worked. If your goal here was establishing Pat McAfee as somebody to take seriously, as somebody you might transition to be, more of a wrestler in the future, then you absolutely accomplished what you set out to do because he was awesome. This match between him and Cole was really good. In Cole's defense here, I know I haven't exactly said singing his praises, but the chemistry between the two was really good and he worked with it. Phenomenal. Like the first three matches of this show, this show I'm sitting there like, man, I am really enjoying this. This doesn't feel like an NXT takeover show like it might usually do. Like, if this is what I'm going to get in WWE at some point in time in the future, then I have a reason to hold out hope. Now, I will say that the match that I was least inspired by or the least interested in 
was Dakota Kai and Io Shirai for the NXT Women's Championship. It's just neither one of those ladies do a whole lot for me. I don't watch NXT on a consistent basis at all. So not really that familiar with them. The match took a while to get going, but once it did, it was good. Like, it was credible. It didn't annoy me that much. And I'll take that at this point. I thought it was weird, though, once the match is over and Io Shirai retains, that it felt like they were putting more focus on Rhea Ripley. And what's the other girl's name? Raquel Gonzalez, is that who it is? If I messed up the name, I do apologize. And I'm sitting there looking at him and I'm saying, so you just had the champion retain, but the focus is here. And I remember a few months ago when everybody telling me that Rhea Ripley was going to be this big, massive star. And looking at this, it's like, I'm more intrigued by the other lady now. Like, y'all jumped the shark on this one, WWE. You screwed this pooch royally. Woo! But it was good. It's not great. The match I'll remember least out of the show. Like there, are, there are actually things on the show that I'll actually remember. This won't be one of them, but that's okay. Not every match needs to be a grand slam. And I will certainly say the main event, I was really looking forward to seeing Karrion Cross versus Keith Lee for the NXT Championship. I think this is the first time I've really ever checked out Cross at all. And obviously what I've seen out of Keith Lee in the past, I've liked, which some of you, I already know where you're going to go with that. Well, of course he would. Well, okay. He's a big dude. He's an athlete. He's got believability to him. He's got a presence and a charisma about him. Yeah, God forbid I might like somebody that has future main event appeal to him. Gee, forgive me, please. Please. Am I the only one that sat there during the badge was thinking, you know, he used to be called Killer Cross. Now he's called Carrion Cross. Could he be called Killer Carrion Cross if you know where I'm going with that? <laughs> nah, I won't do that to dude. If Smokey was still alive, might have been a different story. Y'all know that. You damn right. But, um, like, I look at these two dudes, and in their own kind of isolated bubbles, they both impress me. And I feel like they've got money written all over both of them. Like, these are the type of dudes that I would expect to see in the future main eventing big four WWE pay-per-views. And if they don't, then something has systematically, tragically gone McMahon. Uh, but this match was not the best example of the type of work that I maybe would have expected out of him. Now, maybe some of that was impacted by the apparent uh, dislocation of his shoulder halfway through the match by Karrion Cross. And even when I saw that bump, I, I believe I remember it, it kind of looked funky. And I'm sitting there, and I wonder if he hurt himself. They finished it. It just was off. Like the timing was a little off. The chemistry was a little off. Like early on when Keith Lee busts the plexiglass and it goes down and Cross gives him that kind of like, yeah, that's one of my kinks look. Like, that's awesome. And I look at these two guys, and maybe this is a thing of you were going for a longer match where maybe the shorter match would have served the better purpose here. Like, be in high impact, be powerful, make every single second count. And if you could go, I don't know how long this match went. If it was 15, 20 minutes, I don't really know. But however long it went, it probably could have went half as long and may have potentially accomplished more. Now, it was interesting to me that Keith Lee, I asked people on Twitter because I legitimately couldn't remember how long it had been, um, talk about his champion for maybe a month and a half. Like, did we just have him drop this so that way Cross can now feud with a returning champion and then Keith Lee goes off to the main roster? If he does that, that's okay. I just find it really weird that you put the belt on Keith Lee, have him drop the North American title, now you walk out of this show and he doesn't have either one. And of course, some of us may say, well, of course, Keith Lee, now he's the shortest reigning NXT champion. Gee, I wonder why. Hashtag Vince. Just saying. But while I was expecting more in terms of the match itself, and I think some of that, again, was due to the structure and kind of the execution of where they went from a, a plan standpoint, I still saw enough out of these both of these guys, and especially for Cross, to me, that's where the eyes were more tonight because I was trying to get a better feel for him. Like I liked enough of what I saw to see the potential there. Not everyone's going to be a home run. Not everyone's going to be a grand slam, and that's just the reality of it. But I really, really like tonight's NXT TakeOver. It probably 
Does it feel right to you and some of you that I'm saying this? It feels weird. It feels funky. You're saying, that's it. 2020 can officially hit the bricks. Now we even got the Schleg Daddy talking about how he likes an NXT TakeOver show. Well, you know what? Variety is the, sp is the spice of life. And you can have some of the high-risk bumps and spots and this and that. And that's fine. You can have some of the more plain Jane, you know, jag type of guys, and that could be okay. But it's all, again, about variety and spice. And you had matches that felt different. It wasn't just every single match on the card was a bunch of crash test dummy crap where you weren't telling any stories. All the guys looked the same, acted the same, worked the same. Like, this felt more like, to me, what a professional wrestling big show should be like. Now, I'm sure a lot of the NXT diehards probably did not like this show this much. It's probably going to go down as one of the worst ones in their opinion, which is, to me, even greater indication that this actually was a good show. And your big star of the night, to me, clearly has to be Pat McAfee, and I don't even think it's close. Like, he was oppressive. He won the night. And if you doubted him, I don't think you'd doubt him after the night anymore. It's crazy. Anyways... Thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought about NXT TakeOver, who the winners and losers were. And remember, OTR Essential, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell. What the hell? Turn on the notifications, so when I upload more videos just like this one, you'll be notified, and then you can watch it, and you can rant away with your flaming keyboard fingers of fire in the comment section. See ya.